On tonight's Next Time Try This segment, I want to talk to you about a PVL. If you're not familiar with a PVL, it is an electronic ignition that many people use to replace the points on their bike or perhaps replace the moto plat or some of the worn out ignitions that some guys have been using over the years. They get old and they just give out. Now, PVL is kind of expensive, as you can see there on the box, 519 bucks. I recently put one in a 1971 Harley-Davidson Baja 100 that I just restored. Now, I want to go over this slowly because I think it's some very, very important points here, okay? Number one, there are instructions with this. And if you're like most people, men and women, a lot of times when people come, at, things come out of the box and look very uncomplicated, you will overlook the instructions. Don't. When you get the PVL, open the box, take out the instructions, and spend a half hour reading every page. There are some details in there that you're not going to want to miss, and there are some things that you've probably done over the years, uh, like when you check spark for your bike, what's the first thing you do? You take out the plug, you lay it on the head, you give it a little kick, and you see if there's spark coming out at the end of the plug. That is not the case with a PVL, and you can do damage to it. That's why it's very, very important to read the instructions. Jordan, next slide. One of the first things I did when I opened it up out of the box, if you look down here, after, you'll see some green tape that goes around the rotor. Now I'm thinking to myself, this is only here to protect it in shipping or not to drop it or get anything on it when you're going to be assembling the unit. Not so. That tape is around there because it is about 10 thousandths of an inch. That is the clearance you need when that rotor is attached to your crank with the stator unit on there. Next slide, please, Jordan. You can see it right here. Around the edge of that rotor, right where those black legs are with the two arrows on them, it needs to be 10 thousandths of an inch clearance all the way around. What is 10 thousandths of an inch? If you're not familiar with something like that, it's a piece of paper folded over or two sheets of paper. That's how much clearance you have between that rotor and those legs from that stator. And that's why they put that tape around there too, because when you put it together, that tape should not be hitting any place on those plastic legs. Don't take the tape off. Make sure you have the clearance when you put everything in there. Next slide, please, Jordan. One of the problems you may have when you go to put this rotor on the end of your crank is that your crank has a keyway in there from your previous ignition. Many times the key from that keyway can wear it can get loose and it can cause a burr right where that keyway actually goes. If there is a burr there, even the slightest burr, you're not gonna be able to get the rotor on clearly and squarely, and you're not gonna be able to get that clearance of 10 thousandths of an inch that you need. If there's even the slightest wobble in the rotor, you're gonna have a problem. Here's how you can rectify that problem if you do have it or there's any kind of a burr on that rotor. And by the way, the PVL rotor does not have a keyway. It's got a taper fit. It fits extremely tightly once you pop it on to that crank. Jordan, go to the next slide for a second. Leave it right there. Here's what you're going to use. Valve grinding compound. Okay, you can buy that in any auto parts store. This is what the end of your crank would look like sticking out of your engine. This is going to be your rotor. You're going to put that valve grinding compound right where that rotor sits on the crank, and you're going to begin to spin it. You should spin it in, you could spin it in both directions, but start off going in one direction and then take it off, examine it, and you're going to see that it's going to have or should have a nice matte finish. It should look uniform all the way around. If it doesn't, put a little more valve grinding compound on there, start spinning it the other way, right to left, left to right, and you have a nice, smooth, even finish on the end of that crank. I think in the next slide, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. There it is right there. This happens to actually be the one from the Harley that I did just last week. It was quite an experience for me. I had never really dealt with a PVL before in a situation where it had to have uh, this type of clearance or there was something slightly uh, awry with the crank. But I did, and when I did it, uh, I, I noticed right away that it was nice and smooth, had a nice dark gray finish to it when I finished using the valve grinding compound. What do we got next, Jordan? Okay. This is it after I put it together. I don't have the legs on yet with the stator, but everything fit nice and squarely on there. And when I pushed that rotor onto that crank, and I'm not, I'm not talking about tapping it on, I'm talking about just popping it on there. 
I couldn't get it off. I had to use a little puller that came with it. And with just a couple of turns, it came off. But on a taper fit, it should fit so tightly, so smoothly and go on so, so firmly. You shouldn't really be able to pull it off again with your hands. I'm not saying that you're going to need a puller and two big wrenches, but it may take a little bit to get it off if it truly fits on there correctly. Here it is after I got it all sorted. And there it is, my Harley Baja 100 restoration. Uh, I did that for a great gentleman named Mike Mori from New York. It is being picked up tomorrow at noon.